Hey guys, Moogan here. Just thought I'd give you another video review of a game that I just picked up recently. You may be familiar with it. It's called Battlefield Bad Company 2. It's a pretty great game, really. If you like multiplayer FPSs, then you'll probably like this game. I guess I should preface this by saying that this is a review specifically for the PC version. I don't know anything about the console one. I haven't played it at all. So this is specifically for PC. I should also mention that while I am aware the game has single player, I've played it for maybe 20 minutes at, at max. I bought this game specifically for the multiplayer, so if you're looking for a single player campaign review, then you might as well just stop watching because this has nothing to do with that at all. This is specifically for the multiplayer. Okay, so let's get down to it. This is a class-based shooter, so you do have, you know, the basic, you've got a medic, assault, which is basically sort of a ground troop, engineer, which is your anti-vehicle class, and then you've got recon, which is, you know, your stealth and, you know, sniper class, basically. Because it is class-based, your loadouts are limited to what your class can use, which makes sense. and. I don't know, I've heard some people say they don't like it because they're used to the, the you know, modern warfare, uh, you know, use whatever you want kind of setup, and frankly, I honestly don't really like that setup. I actually prefer it this way because I like having a system where people have pre-designed uh, sort of roles. To me, the game's much more tactical than uh, modern warfare. Modern warfare, you can kind of be just sort of run and gun and go in and do whatever you want by yourself and just gun people down and it's sort of just a big twitch fest and that's about it. Which is okay, I guess. I mean, there's a place for that. But this is a much... It, it's a much more tactical game than Modern Warfare because you have to, you have to work your, with your team. You really can't just go lone wolf and just mow everyone down. I mean, I guess you can maybe if you're really good. <laughs> maybe, but it's doubtful. You you pretty much have to work with a team. You have to work in a squad. It's just designed that way. And that's okay. I, I prefer it that way personally. On that subject, though, I will say this is a game that you really should probably play with a couple of friends because, in my experience, most pubs they just... they. They don't talk at all. Nobody communicates in this game. No pub communicates in this game, and I don't understand why. It's such a tactical game. I don't know why you wouldn't. But it seems like nobody does. But if you've got a couple friends that you can play with, it's super fun if you can just sort of coordinate with your friends what you're doing. Plus just the way the system is built, it makes it really fun. The big thing in this game is squads. And that's a group of four players that they work together, they can sort of coordinate their attacks. Members of a squad can designate sort of squad objectives, like if you want to attack a certain position or defend a certain position. And if you follow those squad directives, then you'll get additional points. The points let you level up faster, which means you get more equipment, which is always good. You can also, a feature that I really like in this game is you can spawn on any member of your squad. So rather than having to just spawn at a couple pre-designated points, wherever your squad members are, as long as they're alive, and as long as they're not like in a vehicle that doesn't have any more seats or whatever, you can spawn right on them, right in the middle of battle. And that's that really makes things much more interesting. And you combine that with the medic's ability to defibrillate dead players and bring them right back into the battle, you can have some pretty intense standoffs because what normally w might be over very quickly suddenly gets turned into a pretty drawn out battle. I also love how the game has a lot of really, really cool vehicles, just all kinds of jeeps and tanks and helicopters and I mean, pretty much everything you can imagine. Uh, jet skis, you name it. It really adds a whole other element to the game that you, you just don't find in you know, games like Modern Warfare that don't have vehicles. Go 
faster. Thank you, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, the game has really nice graphics, too. There's lots of cool uh, lighting effects. It's got really nice HDR lighting, great reflections on water. Uh, it's got a really long view distance as well. So you can, I mean, you can see somebody literally what would be, you know, the equivalent of miles across a map. It's really cool. Just everything, fire, smoke, it all looks great. And if you got a beefy enough system and you crank it up all the way, I mean, it's it, it's a good looking game, not gonna lie. The game also implements what's called Destruction 2.0, which basically is a fancy way of saying you can shoot shit and it'll fucking blow up. You can just blow up whatever the fuck you want. And I, I mean entire buildings, like walls, buildings, everything. Like, you, you can take out enough support struts on a building and the whole thing will just collapse. <laughs> uh, you can take out walls. This adds such a huge strategic element that I've really never seen in a game like this. Because, oh, your sniper's hiding behind a wall? Well, guess what? That wall's gone. You just blow it out from underneath them. <laughs> just with a, a well-placed grenade. I just, I love it. It just adds such a, a higher level of depth than what you're going to find in most shooters. One thing I would like to say about the PC version, because I know this is specific to this version, is probably the biggest difference between the two as far as I know, is that the PC version has a player limit on the maps of 32, as opposed to the console limit, which is 24. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, oh, awesome. I would like to have, you know, more players on a map. That'd probably make things more interesting. Well, the more I play, the more I'm not so happy about that. Here's the thing. Uh, because the maps between the console and PC, are, they're the exact same maps, in my opinion, it seems like the maps are very much designed for those 24 people, and when you put 32 people on them, I've yet to have a match on a full 32 person server and it not just turn into one gigantic clusterfuck. There's just so many people packed onto a map that it's like you can't take two steps without running into someone and you're just dying and respawning constantly. It's so it's so annoying. I, I've never had fun on one of those servers ever. And now you might think, okay, well, maybe that's true, but no big deal, right? I mean, you don't have to play on a 32-person server. Well, that's true. The thing is, it seems to be the common thought process that, well, since you can have 32 people on our PC version, well, we should all just have 32-person servers. And um, that's pretty annoying, because really, like I said, I don't really like the 32-person servers, and in my experience, probably 75% of the servers that are out there are 32-person servers. And so I have to specifically look through all the ones that are like 20 to 24. 24 people, that's pretty good. Like, that's still a lot of people, and it's not nearly as just completely chaotic and crazy as the 32-person one. But... Oh, but we can do 32, so we gotta do 32. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Again, thank you, Jeff Goldblum. The game has excellent sound design as well. You know, it's not often that while I'm playing a game, I take a moment and actually say to myself, wow, you know what, this game sounds fantastic. I mean, sometimes I do. I think of games like Dead Space, and I remember thinking about good sound design, but... It's not very often that, you know, I actually think to myself, wow, this game sounds fantastic. But this this game is one of them. Just all the explosions. When you're in the middle of a really intense battle, you just got, you know, bullets flying by. You got choppers flying by. And you hear that, the freaking minigun from a chopper. That is just like the most terrifying sound ever. You're just sitting there waiting, maybe capping a flag or something, and then all of a sudden you just hear... And you're just like, oh, fuck me. The uh, shell shock silence effect is used to great effect in this game as well. I, normally, I'm not a huge fan of that because I think it's kind of cliche, but I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's just done very well in this game. It makes things a lot more intense. The voice work is pretty good as well. None of it sounds really too hammy or anything. Even the Russian dialogue sounds good. It's interesting to hear that. 
Except for one line that I swear to God he's saying spaghetti. I don't know what he's saying, but that's what I'm hearing. All in all, I found this to be a thoroughly enjoyable game. I've had a great time so far, and anyone who's looking for a really fun, tactical, multiplayer FPS, I would highly recommend this to you. Just be prepared for a slightly higher learning curve than what you might normally find on this type of game. It does take some practice, and it will start slow. Uh, you start out with shitty equipment, so your leveling will be slow at first, but as you get into the groove of things, it'll go faster and faster. And once you get into that sort of zone, I think you'll really have a good time. Open the new